Hi everyone, I'm really happy to be here today to share with you some information about my work and I developed my method even further looking more for solution focused work. So what I did the last couple of years really was to find something which really helps as a toolbox you can bring to the riding arena or you do your exercises at home. So what I do got even more powerful, more helpful and more effective. And I'm very happy and excited to share it with you today. And I hope you enjoy this little presentation um, I put together. And um, there will be a bit theory I share with you, which is um, yeah behind what I do um, so you understand what I'm all about and um, yeah happy to do that for you so just sit back relax and enjoy so as I said I develop my method even further and it's called by now the embodied writing method um, and it incorporates all levels of body, mind, and soul. And I really do like the word embodied because embodiment really is what I'm looking for. And that means that you really become the rider you want to be, not only in your body, but in your mind and in your soul. And it's really all about overcoming riding techniques and ride from within, ride with everything you are. And that always gives you lightness because it's truly connected to yourself, truly connected to your horse. And in that way, I feel that there is, there is flow. And I do really enjoy that feeling of deep connection and flow and lightness at the same time so what i did in the last couple of years was to add bits and pieces of brain-based training to my program to my method which makes it even more solution focused which is great because i created a real toolbox um, with even more tools than i had before you can actually bring to the riding arena or do them at home to become really the rider you want to be. Because to me, you are an athlete, but also you're a human being with a story to tell and you're so much more. So, and when we ride, we tend to bring everything we are with us into the cell. So I feel it is very important that on one hand, we take a look back into the past and, and see what we need to do to actually regulate our nervous system. So we might need a neuro reset to get rid of things, get rid of tension, get rid of, of um, tension structures, but also maybe beliefs or emotions, whatever it is, um, so that's where we need a neuro reset. And up to now, this is what I focused on most because I felt that we just need less luggage on horseback. But what I always felt was that I need even more strategies and more content to give you more possibilities to actually go into um, a solution focused work. So what I did was that I created a second part of my work, which I call the neuro empowerment, where it is all about the neurology of movement. And that gives you a deep insight really on how the brain functions when we ride and actually how we can manipulate the brain to make us be better horse riders. Because the nervous system, you see, is that it's just such an interesting um, topic because it can be the cause of problems we experience in the saddle, but it can be the solution at the same time. So if we find, 
the correct door to go through, we actually can solve a lot. We can solve what we call maybe our challenges. We can understand where they come from and we can work with the brain and the nervous system to let them go, to integrate them um, and to get to a point where we feel that we are a really valuable partner to our horse. And the nervous system is very interesting because it is mirrored not only in the body and in the way we move, but also in the way we think and in the way we feel. So on all levels, the body, the mindset, and also our emotions, we can actually work with neurology to get a better, let's say, output. And I will go a little bit further into this so you understand already a little bit the uh, theory behind it. So in brain-based training, one of maybe the major sentence you need to keep in mind is that you always want to work with your brain and not against your brain. And working against your brain actually happens quite easily. So I try to explain that to you. So to the brain, the very first priority really is safety. So it is always safety first because our brain really wants us to survive. That's it, end of story. You could put it that easily um, because that really is what the brain wants to do. And actually the brain does not really care um, what side effects or what price on is on survival so the first priority is that we survive a situation no matter what happens to us in terms of body mind set or emotion so um, it doesn't matter what experience we make as long as we survive and that's actually quite interesting because being on horseback you can tell for the brain from the brain's perspective is already something not really safe <laughs> so um, the brain might already be a bit worried and of course that depends on your level of riding your experience your mindset your body on everything really so if the brain is not feeling safe with you being on horseback the brain will immediately, unconsciously, without asking, put, will put hand brakes on. Hand brakes can um, be very different things. So a hand, a neuro hand brake can mean that you get stiff. Could also mean that you get very slow in what you do, or that your coordination is very gets poor. Um, it can also be that you can't focus, that you can't breathe as good as you did before. So I think we all know situations where we might got a fright and you can feel how having a fright actually is mirrored in your body, but also in your mindset and in your feelings. And so we always have to take care when we get stressed on horseback, maybe because we do something we're not so sure of doing that the brain already will be in kind of a, um, a very attentive mode of watching if that is still safe or if that's already kind of um, needing a survival mode of the brain. So we always have to work with the brain and the brain needs quite a bit to actually function well for us so we need to take a look at our nutrition we need to look at our breathing because oxygen is just very important to the brain to actually be able to work and movement and varieties of movement really that's what what brain empowerment is all about and most horse riders do a lot of riding, but maybe not so much of other sports or other movement. So we'll integrate that 
as well. And we'll take a deeper look even into this um, into this topic. So when we write, we are most of the time doing an output based sport. So let's say you write a shoulder in and it is not going the way you want it to be. So what do you do? Probably you repeat, you repeat and repeat and repeat. So you try to improve the output. You try to improve the shoulder in, which is a very good idea when the cause of the problem is an output-based problem, which means a problem in, in the muscles, in the muscles of the horse, in the movement. Okay, so that, that's meant by output. But what if the problem is actually a, actually um, further, further um, ahead? It could also be in the brain itself or even further in your sensory system. So to make this even more clear, I will just tell a little story so you get into this thinking of neurology for movement. So let's say you're a cook. So a cook can only cook as good as the ingredients are, right? So if they're superb ingredients and it's a really, really good cook, you can be quite sure that the output will be nice, will be tasty, will be healthy, will be fresh, right? So, but if you have poor quality ingredients, you could be the best cook in the world, but if the quality is not good there's no so, not so much you can do so probably the output might be not so good so if you look at this picture you can see how it all belongs together now in brain brain based training we incorporate all three stages so we look, take a look at the sensory system. And so we check on your ingredients. We check on your eyes. We check on your hearing, on your smell. We work with your taste and your feel. So we work with all the receptors in your skin, sending information to your brain and actually activating your brain. And then in brain-based training, we will also work with your brain, directly manipulating areas in your brain which are important for horse riders. So we, because the, the whole planning of movement, the structure of movement, um, but also um, the stability or the balance needed for a certain movement will be put together in the brain, right? So we, we really need to take care that these systems, the vestibular system, the proprioceptional system, the, will work together. So it's all about making a good plan of movement, providing exactly the stability and the balance you need to actually do that movement. And all of this together will then make a good output. So if you feel that maybe with repeating stuff, you didn't get much better, this might be your solution. Because maybe you just trained at kind of the wrong part of this um, picture. So that's what I do. So I have very concrete, very practical, very simple exercises you can do to increase the activity in your brain for certain output wanted. And the same as with the sensory system, there are very, um, funny, actually, um, um, very interesting and very um, nice exercises you can do to activate this whole um, equation. So let's, let's take 
a further step. So to me, the first step really is the neuro reset, where it's really about regulating your nervous system. It's also about inhibiting maybe brain areas, because if certain brain areas are too busy, too activated, too eager, um, that can actually cause problems. Um, so we will definitely go also into breath work. We will work with our eyes because they're very, very important um, and very, um, they're really the networkers uh, with our brain. And we'll also do mindset training because in our brain, not only movement is planned, but also our thoughts and our emotions are stored. And so the second step, to me is neuro empowerment where it's really that we take a close look at what is needed to be a good horse rider so we need a very good balance so we will check very um very um good on your vestibular system very precisely actually because in riding we have um we need a very vestibular system because we have movement which goes on a vertical like up and down and also forward backward like a horizontal balance and also we need um, to put that together in riding so actually we can do a lot with that with our in, um, um, vestibular system in our ear to make you the best rider you can be because your vestibular system is really good trained let's put it this way and then we'll look at movement so we'll look at the precise movement so is your brain actually following recipes <laughs> or is your brain just being very creative putting everything together but then the output might be well let's let's call it interesting <laughs> interesting taste weird mixture of something so we'll take a very close look on your movement on precise movement planning and we'll go into areas of your brain where exactly that work is done and we'll see if, if these areas work properly or not and then we actually can increase their activation we can activate them so they do a better job in the future and we'll do that with exercises, which are actually very easy to do. So um, when I'm gone again, and I will leave you after the clinic, you will be able to keep going, which is great. And I will look at coordination because to be a good horse rider, we need to have very good coordination. And we also need very good stability because, and this brings me back to the very first topic of safety. So if the brain's first priority is safety first, your brain will only allow you to be as flexible and as supple only as much as your vestibular system and your stability will keep up, right? So if your brain feels that your balance is poor, your body will only be able to do a movement until the brain says well we are not going any further than this because the vestibular system the balance is not good enough to do it so sometimes people feel stiff but actually they're not stiff it's their their handbrake in the nervous system telling no she should better stop because the balance isn't good enough to be even more supple. So to go into um, this perspective of the nervous system and to, to look at horse riding from this perspective gives you a whole lot of new opportunities to understand challenges in your own writing and in the writing maybe of your students and it will give you very um practical solutions you can do with them to increase the brain function and to create better output 
on all levels because working with the brain the brain really does everything in our body doesn't it so if we work with the brain we have kind of a door <laughs> to every single um, challenge we might experience and we can go very direct into areas and improve them so if you don't know me yet um, I'm Julika Valentina I do live in Germany at the moment and I keep a little tinker cob which I uh, bought in Ireland when I lived in Ireland and so when I was young when I was a teenager I used to be a show jumper and an eventer and this is where my true connection with horses um, came from to to be really in a partnership with them and to be together with them for something and not against each other so I really do enjoy riding in in the sense of being being connected to myself and being connected to my horse um, and yeah I, I I'm really interested in everything which is um, influencing this dialogue of horse and human and I'm very passionate about going deep and finding really the cause of something and then providing something which will help you on a deeper level to understand what what's the reason behind it and then most of the time it's easier to find a solution when you know what the cause really is um so yeah I do live in Hamburg I'm married and I have two very very nice little um daughters and um Riding to me really is something I need for life. It's like food. It's something I need to do. Otherwise, I do not feel whole. So to me, it's very close to my heart. And I really do want that my horse enjoys the riding as much as I do. So I'm that made me very passionate about becoming the human I really want to be for myself for my family but also for my horse and this is how I got so passionate about what I did because I do have experienced in my childhood a lot of trauma a lot of traumatic life experiences which definitely had a great impact on my body my mindset and my emotions and when I was 20 something, I felt that I wasn't able to, to leave that on the ground when I would mount. And I felt how it was disturbing the dialogue between me and my horse on horseback. I felt that I was the problem. And so that's how I got very passionate about finding out what, what is the cause of me not being able to let go, to be supple, to allow, to listen, but to be, let's say, in kind of a survival mode. And when I figured how trauma integration can help me and how brain-based training was able to make me be a very good athlete and actually to let go on a very deep level, very deep inside of stuff that made me really happy. And I felt like I need to share this <laughs> with it as much um, people in the world, um, because to me, it is very important that we will change the horse world into a better place. That's my vision. My vision is that we integrate neurology into horse riding because it has such a huge impact on your body, your mindset, and your emotions. And to be really light with your horse 
needs a regulated nervous system, which is ready to go, whatever the two of you plan to do. So if you want to be part of this, you can write me an email and I'm looking forward to meet you again, if I have been at your place or to yeah, meet new people who are open and interested in the work I do.